Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? I was recently made aware of a video that Brother Abdul Rahman Hassan had made on the permissibility of football or lack thereof. And this video, I found it astounding. Absolutely astounding. And I've just come to the conclusion that there must be a deeper reason why such conclusions are being met. So after I've done the initial prognosis, if you want to call it that, or diagnostic, uh, and once we've quickly just ran through some of the things that he said, um, I'm going to offer some solutions, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, I'm going to offer some solutions. So the first thing he said was that the reason why football, well, well he was saying about football that it has in it, الحكم بغير ما أنزل الله وتحكيم قوانين الوضعية or um, putting into pl place laws which are man-made laws against the against tuhalifu against the laws of Islam. Let's take a look at this astonishing and shocking, okay, segment of him speaking about this. Harmful thing that he has, actually, is تحكيم القوانين الوضعية. Man-made laws are applied here in the game. Mm. For example. First of all, Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Okay? Um, the Prophet also said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, لَحَدٌ يُقَامُ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَيْرٌ لِأَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ أَنْ يُمْطَرُوا ثَلَاثِينَ صَبَاحًا وفي رواية, إقامة حد في الأرض خير لأهلها من مطر أربعين ليلة الإمام النسائي رحمه الله authenticated Ibn Majah The hadith is Hassan, Sheikh Nasir رحمه الله authenticated It's a hadith sahihah Some scholars have weakened it and others We're coming to an issue known as الحكم بغير ما أنزل الله Ruri by other than Allah sent down subhanahu wa ta'ala We've spoken about this issue Let's not take it to the Because some of its forms can be kufr akbar Some of its forms can be kufr akbar We mentioned the In the forms, podcast we did, yeah Yeah, we've done a podcast on it The forms that it can become kufr akbar But what's the bare minimum that you use? It's kufr asghar It's kufr asghar It's higher than al-kabir kabair Major sins So where are the man-made laws in football? I don't understand Okay, we know in our legislation What do we have? In our sharia We have ibadat and mu'amalat mm -hmm. In our fiqh books If you look at it When the scholars speak about fiqh They divide it into four Or even if you want to say two Let's make it four Ibadat Act of worship Ibadat Then we have Al-mu'amalat uh, Illa buyur Al-nikah Al-talaq Al-fisq Al-khula' All of those are in there Then you have Al-jinayat Jinayat are crimes that are committed And then al-hudud Which are capital punishments Okay I mean punishments for those Scholars, that's what our our legal Islamic legislation revolves around. It talks okay. about after aqidah, these are the things you study in fiqh. Now, football consists of, a, it's a game of co coming into contact with one another. Yeah. Okay. When a person attacks another person and breaks a person's bones, mm. or breaks a person's leg, or get a person gets injured, mm. or a person puts a finger in a person's eye, Do they go to the chapters of Al-Jinayat and Al-Qisas? No, al of course, of course not. Al-Ayn bil-Ayn wal-Udhun bil-Udhun wal wal-Juru haqqisas yadu bil yadu. Do they say that? No. What did they read? The red card, right? Or just go off the yeah. pitch. Yellow card, go off the pitch. Yeah, but that, that's because it's a game. It's, that's the game. That's the, the... But in our religion, we have. It doesn't matter whether it's a game or not. Islam, as you mentioned at the beginning, Salihatu li kulli zaman wa makan. Islam governs everything. It conforms to everything. Our religion enters every minute thing. You go to the toilet, you're told how to clean yourself. I'm absolutely astounded by that. Because here, the obviously, the assumption, let's, let's say why he's wrong, okay? The assumption is that, for example, they're playing football and um, someone gets injured to the point where they're One of the limbs gets amputated, which rarely happens. Or, well, okay, their bones get broken, which sometimes does happen, right? That the punishment is going to be automatic removal of the game, red card, or whatever it is. And he says that this goes against the Islamic laws, which indicate that, you know, whatever it is, have qisas has to be given, basically, which you can see in the Qutb al-Fiqh, in the Bab of Jinayat. How pathetic. Sorry. How is that a contradiction when if it's an Islamic state, the the person, the claimant, can actually still make the claim and he'll have video evidence to suggest that the person actually hurt them? If anything, 
football, if it's being recorded, will, will help the retribution of justice if that particular court decides to take videographic evidence. I don't see how there is a muhalifa here or ta'arud. And why is it assumed that a referee should have, and think about this for a second, why should the referee have the powers to do hudud or punishments or tazirat or whatever it may be? Just think before you speak. Just think. This is absolutely diabolical. <laughs> this is absolutely diabolical. Where he talks about not getting along with or not loving, not being able to love a people of different faiths and religion. Let's take a look at what he has to say. The middle, like who's offside, I'm with yeah, you. any penalty where he's shot from, all of these are administrative. This okay, is fine. Good, okay, this. With you. We're talking about qawaneen to khalifu hukm Allah ta'ala, the go against the laws of Allah ta'ala, which the football players are forced to follow. For example, some of them, and I'm going to expand on some of them. For example, some of the laws that yeah, I mean, that they go into is um, the player is made to love his football player team member, even if he's of different religion. It doesn't have to. Of course, yeah, have to. how are you playing with you? How are you playing? How are you it's just like it? your colleague. You're at work. You've got a non-Muslim colleague. It doesn't mean you have to love him. You work together. Of course, you're working. It's a job for them. They've, some of them have even come out saying we don't get along, but it's a job. Le years later, they had big, big rifts. You didn't no, realize these two guys. Okay, I'm, I'm agree, agreeing with you. Two or three people he might not get along with. No problem. But he can't get along with the entire team members. He has it's, to get along. You, to... What you've mentioned is no different to me in my corporate job, in my company. I've got non-Muslims that I have to work with them. I'm like some of them. No, I don't no, know no, that. no, no. You can come into your work and do your work and leave. It's got nothing to do. You don't mind even know your, your, your team members and your people you're working with. Here, it's a team thing. I need to know who the striker is. I, the goalkeeper needs to know the... the and, yeah, and it, you have to be... No, I don't agree with this point. You're part of a... What happens when a Muslim marries a Christian or a Jew? Hmm? What happened with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he revealed إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبَتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي مَا يَشَاءُ If الحب الطبيعي uh, love that's not relating to the religion natural love between people from different faiths is haram then the Prophet fell into haram and We will see how your methodologies and how your statements are so totally against the Sunnah and the Quran that I'm shocked with all due respect that you had the absolute audacity to come out and speak in the manner that you have on a topic like this. That you may say about Allah which you don't even know. What? And I'm, I'm shocked. Someone who's spent so much time, I'm actually, I can't hold it in and I'm not going to lie to anyone here. I don't want to backbite this man behind his back. I'm going to tell you guys exactly what I think. This shows, with all due respect, the difference, the important difference between someone who studies and regurgitates and memorizes knowledge and someone who thinks and contemplates. There's no better kind of example we can get for this. How can you come to these conclusions? How can you? Well, praising disbelievers. And he's indicating that, well, look, he's not saying, I'm not going to go into the permissibility of it or lack thereof. He says, what I am going to say is, I can't see how someone can bring themselves to praise someone who basically is a disbeliever. And he, he mentions a few tra uh, traits. So let's see what he says on this matter and come back. That's something for the women. Men are imitating the women in this matter. You know, speaking about the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, I'm sorry to go back to something we were discussing earlier. But you mentioned the hadith to me yesterday, which I, uh, I'd like to bring forward, inshallah. We're talking about the way not, uh, we look up to, or some of the Muslims look up to non-Muslim footballers and things like that. Are you allowed to praise a non-Muslim? Say he's so good at football. There's he's a the hadith that scholars talk about its authenticity, like in discussion back and forth regarding it. The Prophet وسلم, said, لا تقولوا لمنافقي سيدا فإنه إن يكو سيدا فقد خطم ربكم. Don't say a, a munafiq or a disbeliever is a master or good or don't praise him. Wow. If he is, then you've angered your Lord. You're not allowed to praise him and, and, and speak highly of him. So if the hadith is authentic? Some you, of the scholars uh, okay. are There's, mm -hmm. There's a look of back and forth to it. But the point is, the point is, I don't want to, I don't want to press my argument sure. on that. I'm saying, I, I, even if 
there was a Shara'i prohibition on this issue. I can't. Someone who said Allah hasn't got a child. Uh, Allah has a child, sorry. Mm. Someone who doesn't believe in Allah's existence. Someone doesn't, who doesn't even worship Allah ta'ala, who disobeys Allah after he created him and brought him to, into this world. I honestly can't speak greatly and highly and glorify him like that. I can't. Just my heart won't allow me. If someone says insulted your mother, your own mother, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even... dismiss dismisses you, your mother's value and his importance. Yeah. Or you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't like him in any way, shape or form. You'd have enmity towards him. What about Allah? And now you're saying this guy's such a good player. I want to watch him. I like the way he plays. Also the concept of backbiting. Okay. Ya ladina amanu ishtaribu kathira min al-dhan inna ba'da al-dhani ithmu wa la tajassasu wa la yaktab ba'dukum ba'da a yuhibbu ahadukum an yakula lahma akhihi mayta fakaritubu wa attaqu Allah inna Allah tawabu al-rahim Ya'ali da Now, this is absolutely diabolical. <laughs> and this is mukhalafa li sunnah He is mentioning a hadith which he says, oh, the authenticity of it is we don't know whether it's strong or weak. Well, let me give you three hadiths which we know the authenticity is strong. Number one, Mut'aim ibn Adi, who the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa explicitly, absolutely explicitly said, had he been alive, I would, have, I would have forgiven these, I would have asked Allah to forgive these people. So this is a kind of praise, but you might say no. You might say no. So you guys mentioned the philosophers. Why are you mentioning the philosophers when you have Quran and Sunnah? Why are you mentioning the, uh, the you know the th thinkers and so on? Why are you mentioning Aristotle? Hmm? Why are you mentioning Plato? Well, I want to tell you something today that maybe you did not know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned a bait of Shar. He mentioned a line of Shar from a man called Labid, who was a non-believer before the time of Islam. And he mentioned مَا خَلَ اللَّهُ بَاطِلُ Or something to this effect That whoever is aside Allah is in vain And that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He done istidlal, Not istidlal But he mentioned it And he said This is the, this is the truest thing a, prophet, a, a poet has said Why am I even mention it? Hmm? If there's no utility value in so doing why even mention Lab Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu Amr ibn al-As he praised the Romans he said that they're the quickest to recover he actually mentioned so many characteristics he said they're the quickest to recover after a defeat one of the things that he mentioned of many things so you can't bring yourself to praise disbelievers but the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba could either you are better than them or you don't understand them and you don't understand the religion fully and this is why I want to offer my services. I don't want to just tell you, I don't mean this to Allah, we're not trying to arrogate to you. I just don't want to backbite you. I want to say this so everyone can hear it. And everyone, I don't want to say it to friends and family. Oh, look at this guy. He doesn't know this and doesn't know that. I'm making fun of you behind your back. I would, I'd rather you see this and make it public. But I do want to offer my services. Yeah, I think that what's due is like a crash course in critical thinking. And I think that if we humble each other, ourselves to each other, Maybe we can teach each other certain things. The Salaf used to say, لا مستحي ولا متكبر. There are two kinds of people that don't learn the knowledge. A shy person and an arrogant person. I would say, please take my offer up. We work closely with you, okay, to try and develop critical reasoning skills. And hopefully you can start applying those in your fetus.